Well, hi there. Today, I want to share a little dark room adventure that I'm going to take together with you. I hope, if it works at least. So, the topic of today shall be this. For example, this is only a little demo piece, basically, because what I want to do is I need four pictures just like this. Um, these four pictures are from um, the same film and uh, the same. Uh, <laughs> it's the same pictures that I already uh, shown you in the video about this uh, 90 mm um, beautiful 90 mm Olympus macro lens the very first video that I did <laughs> on this channel um, the film that I've developed uh, from there and um, the pictures that I've shown to you not all of them but some of them will be the topic of today because I want four of them to hang them up uh, <laughs> In my flat so uh, the first one actually this is the uh, 30 times 40 print that I've done in the video but it was done on not the nicest paper <laughs> so I want to uh, do the four pictures I will show you the pictures because I already digitalized the negatives so here are the pictures the first one and the second the third and the fourth and these are the pictures that I want to develop in the darkroom today. Well, and afterwards they are getting framed and they go onto the wall. I'm very looking forward to this because, yeah, I think I will love the result. <laughs> so that is the video for today. I hope you have fun. Uh, to look at some darkroom work. Cheers. Okay, so we're in the darkroom and the first thing that we need to do is to pick, pick out the right paper. Um, it's not that hard to do because I know exactly what paper I want to work with. The problem is rather to uh, get to it. Uh, because it's of course like usual behind everything else. So I see you in a minute <laughs> Okay, here we are again um, I've put everything I don't need back inside and I've got two different papers And this is some quite an old aqua paper, but it was kept in the fridge for uh, Many years, so it's still very good. 30 times 40, uh, multi-grade paper, uh, semi matte and this is the one I think I'm going to use. But I also have new Foma um, Barit paper that I did not use before, so it's still sealed. Um, I bought this new um, when I started uh, working in the darkroom. Uh, the first <laughs> tries in a way so I'm very very keen in uh, trying out what this paper can do so this is the um, bird uh, ballet pa uh, paper is kind of an uh, experiment and I think what I'm going to settle on is um, the aqua right here yeah so let's go so first things first, I need to set up uh, everything uh, in a way that I can use it. So I need to get the developer, the um, stop bath and the fix bath in order. And at last comes a water bath. So I can get rid of all the chemicals. Alright, let's go. This is fresh, freshly mixed Neutol. Did not use it before, so I'm interested in finding out how it works. 
Okay, so what we got right here is all the um, chemical bath are finished, put in, and now what we need to do next is to get the safe light running, of course. Also do that in the next room. Because at a certain point, obviously, everything needs to be <laughs> done in the dark. And we need to set up the um, enlarger. I do it now because obviously, while it's dark, it's a little bit harder to do it in comparison to right now. The film that I am uh, wants to um, develop the pictures from is a 35mm film. So, what I need for my enlarger is a lens that allows me to work with 35mm film. And for this I need this 50mm f2.8 uh, Schneider Kreuznach Component S. So a six element, very high quality enlarging lens. It works beautifully. It is exactly right. And I need to switch my enlarger to kind of 35 mil mode. So I do this right now. This is everything. Everything is working fine. So lens is in place. And now we basically can start to work. This one right here, so it's for 30 times 40 at a maximum. And now we just need to find the right film to get the right negatives. And where is it? It is, I think, this film right here. Yes, it is. So it is Kodak uh, TX400. Oh, I thought it was a little bit lower ISO film, yeah, but anyway, so this is uh, the film that we're going to use. And now, the rest shall be in the dark. Okay, so, let's go, let's go. So, everything is ready. We have a film. All the baths are ready and now we need to get the film into the larger and make a setup so that we are happy with the results. What do we got right here? I think paper safe, yes. So we need what picture should we start with? I think with this film stripe because two of the pictures that I want to get are on here. So the uh, nice, uh, nice thing on this enlarger is that if I want to put film in it, I just have to raise up the um, film carrier a little bit and then I can start to insert the film without really uh, taking it apart fully. Now I need to get it framed up nicely like so. Now I need to focus because it's not focused at all, like this, it's quite good. And now the picture is too small because I want to uh, fully cover 30 times 40. So what I need to do is I need to raise up my enlarger, the enlarger head. I need 
to raise it up until everything is in frame. Obviously, the focus is completely off. The focusing happens at f2.8. I um, already roughly focused it, so I'm happy with the um, with the size right now. That's quite nice. Yes, like this. Oh, like oh, like this. But that's good. I need to focus right now. So for this, I need my focusing loop. And we are at f2.8, wide open. So we can properly focus. Everything here is good, yes. And let's see that we can... And now you turn the focusing wheel until you see the film grain. It sort of pops so you can really see it like this nice and if that happens you know that you are dead on with the sharpness okay so that's good the framing yeah like this okay and next what we need to do is we need to get some um, test strips from the paper and we need to find out the right time to expose our photo paper. Well, okay, so what I will we'll start to do now is I open the package, the photo paper inside. There's no test strips so far. Did I do? Do I have some left? Yes, I do. So right here we have some test stripes. So I don't need to cut new ones, which is nice. So I'm pulling some of them out. Placing them underneath in the box right here like this. And if I obviously need one of them, now I place the um, whole package on top of it and close it back up so the paper does not get exposed when I um, switch on the light. So this is our first stripe, test stripe, obviously nothing on it at the moment. And this is the stuff that we need to work with right now. Okay, so now this is the picture. First, we need to close down the aperture to f8, because I work at f8. And then is the safety line completely down. Now it's completely bright, so like this. Yes. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> well, let's turn it up a little bit. Like this. Yeah. So, we got a picture. And what we need to do now is we need to get out the test stripe and work with that. Uh, sometimes it's quite difficult to tell which side is the right one and which side should be um, uh, facing towards the larger head, of course, because the other side is just paper and won't show anything at all. So we need to um, pick the right size. I uh, right side. I know that this side um, is the right one because it sort of shimmers in the light and it also feels different. Now I'm just going to um, use a little bit of uh, sticky thingies stick them to the back so the paper won't slip around. Now I press it against my body to um, cover it from lighting. I want to do it, I want to put it right here. So I put the paper down like this. 
And now we get to the fun part. So I will expose the paper for two seconds. And now I will do a lot of steps. Okay, so process done. Now we throw this one into the developer. Let's see. I will move you a little bit like this. I have an old mechanical uh, clock right here, like this one. And this basically just when I started, it starts running, and I know exactly when one and a half minutes is over. Because right now, I put the paper into the developer like this. Okay, so this is the result that we got. So we have um, the different steps on here. So it goes from two seconds right up, four, six, eight, and so on. And I think if I look at this results, the sweet spot might be. Uh, around six seconds, maybe, I think. So this is four, this is six. Mm, yeah, around around six seconds, I think. Should be good. Let's try this out. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is to go through the entire process once with the safety light set to the maximum setting because I think then you can uh, enjoy the process the most and after that I'm going to turn down the safety light to its minimum so in here it will be uh, look like this and this is much better because I don't get any problems uh, with my uh, photo paper so this is what we are going to do right now I'm going to switch on the enlarger, going to put it at 6 seconds, which is the, um, the time that I want to try out. Well, let's, let's, let's put it at uh, six and a half, and I'm going to put a little bit of magenta in it, a little bit of magenta. Seven seconds and a little bit of magenta. Okay, yeah, like this. All right, so the enlarger is ready. So let's get out a full sheet. Everything is fine, yes. right side up. It's definitely this shiny side. Now we need to get it laying down in the holder correctly. And six seconds, everything is seven seconds, everything is okay. And let's go. Turn off the enlarger right now, and now put it into the bath. And as this developer is quite fast, 
as we learned from the test track, the results will be visible quite fast as well. Yes, that looks nice. So I've looked it up. The developer said that it needs 50 seconds. So that is exactly what I'm going to give it. I'm constantly moving because like these chemicals, fresh chemicals will get everywhere like it should. So 50 seconds are over. I will grab the paper at one corner and then pull it up. So most of the chemicals can drip from the paper. And now I will wait a little bit and then I'm going to put it in uh, to the next bar and that's it basically. So it goes into the stop bath right now because I want to protect my last fixed bath. Because if a pure developer gets in there, it will um, very, uh, it will be used up quite, quite fast, basically. So I don't want that to happen. So I protect it with using a stop bath in between. But well, this does not need to be, does not take to be so long. So like 10 seconds or something like that is fine. So let's go into the last bath. So in this last bath, the paper needs to rest in for basically exactly the same time as the developer. It's like roundabout. So I will um, let the paper rest in the fixer for around um, a minute and then it's ready to be taken out. And when this part is through, we obviously can put back on the lights and look at our result if we are happy with it. Mm -hmm. Let's see, let's see. So in a couple of seconds, it will be safe to turn on the light. Turn this one around. <coughs> okay, so let's take a look. Oh yes. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Oh, I quite like it actually. Oh, it's quite good. It's quite good. Do I want to change anything? Mm -hmm. mm, no, I don't think so. I think it looks quite good. Oh, there's a scratch on the negative. Sad. But it's fine. Okay. So, just hang it up and now I will continue this one 
um, but only with the uh, safety light um, set to the minimum set setting because like this I won't have any problems um, with getting some, getting some haze or something like that on the picture. Okay, so I will continue just like this for all the pictures and then I'm going to see you with the result. Okay, results on the table. So these are the pictures that I've uh, taken, that I've uh, enlarged. Um, these two um, square format pictures are not for the job today because um, the point where these pictures will go is right here. So the um, square format is basically just not the right thing but these are the four pictures and I'm looking very forward on getting this these into the places so the project is done 
picture zone please and they look like this I'm very happy with the result